Hello, Aster Navigators, and welcome to Mrs. Buffkin's Art Corner. This is the art project that we're going to be doing today. It is a bubble painting of hydrangeas. And if you're not familiar with what a hydrangea is, this is what hydrangeas look like. They're beautiful flowers that grow around Astoria. Um, they, are, they grow in clumps, a lot of little tiny flowers in a big clump. They have big green leaves and the leaves kind of have a jagged edge and you can see some nice veining in the actual leaves themselves. So this is what we're going to create today. And we're going to do it in a really fun way. This project is going to require some adult supervision and you might need some help from an adult. Um, but it is easy to do uh, and you will have so much fun if you try this project. So let's get started. This is what you're going to need today. You're going to need a piece of paper. This is just eight and a half by 11 copy paper, white, and you might need a few pieces. And if you wanna do the more advanced version of the project, this is what that looks like. And we've got a 3D kind of butterfly effect going on here, and even the flowers are a little bit raised. So if you wanna try this one out, you'll need a background piece of paper. Um, and for that, I chose just a piece of blue paper. Construction paper would work fine. If you don't have a background piece of paper, that's okay, you don't need one. You can just use a regular piece of paper or you can even color a background with some crayons or marker or colored pencils. So the first thing is I wanna show you guys what you're gonna need because you're gonna need a few things for this one. This is our secret ingredient. Yes, it is dish soap. It's dishwashing liquid. This is not the stuff you put in your dishwasher. This is the stuff that you would wash your dishes by hand with. So you'll need some of that. And it doesn't, mine just happens to be pink. You don't need it to be any particular color. Whatever color yours is, it's fine. It's not even gonna be, uh, it's not even gonna show up. You're gonna need some acrylic paint. I've got purple that I'm using. Hydrangeas come in all different shades. Uh, they come in white, pink, purple, blue even. So any shades of those colors, you can make your hydrangeas. But you know guys, if you wanted to make hydrangeas rainbow color, or um, I, don't, I don't know how you would do rainbow color, but if you wanted to make them whatever color you want, this is your art. You make it how you want. You'll also need to have a black pen. Um, this is to add some detail work on the leaves when we get to that part. I used watercolors to color the leaves and you can use watercolors or you can use anything else you want, colored pencils, other paint, um, markers, that part's up to you. And our secret weapon for this project, you ready for this? It's a straw. Yeah, that's our secret weapon. It's a straw. That's going to give us some awesome effects for this particular project. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take um, my paper and I'm going, the first thing I want to do to this is I want to put my hydrangeas. So let me show you how we do that. You need to make a mixture of bubble paint. And what that consists of is one part of acrylic paint, one part of dish soap, and two parts of water, and you mix it up really well. And that's where you're going to need some adult supervision to help you get that right. And I will put the recipe in the description down below so you can just check it out. You can make as little or as much as you want. Um, I made probably a tablespoon of paint, a tablespoon of dish soap, and two tablespoons of water, and I had plenty of paint. And mine's been sitting for a little while and it's gonna look kind of weird, but this is what mine looks like. And you're gonna put your paint in a bowl and you want to be careful the size bowl you use. This is just a soup bowl or a cereal bowl that you would have at home. It doesn't have to be any particular kind of bowl, but the size of your bowl matters because that's how big your hydrangea is gonna be. So we have our paint mixed in here. And then we're going to take our straw and we're going to blow bubbles in there. Yeah, we're blowing bubbles. So make sure you have your work surfaces covered because this does get a little bit messy and this is paint. So be careful. And this has been sitting a little while, so I'm just going to 
mix this up a little bit. Actually, this has been sitting quite a while. Um, to get everything stirred up, and you can see my paint and my water. And I'm starting to get a little bit of bubbles. But how do I get the big bubbles? Watch. Is that not awesome or what? So then I take my piece of paper while the bubbles are still there. If there's any really big bubbles like this one, you can just get rid of it. And I just gently put my paper down so it touches the bubbles and bring it up. And there I've got some bubbles. So let's give, let's put these bubbles up a little bit more. This is not the goofiest thing you guys have seen. So I want these to be a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna go right over it again. And there's my hydrangea. If you want it even darker, you can do it again. And you'll notice that some of the bubbles are on my paper and that's okay. If you let those dry, it'll just disappear. Don't worry about it. Okay, so you would wanna set this aside and let it dry. And you can see how fun that was, guys. That was awesome. If you can figure out how to do multiple colors, let me know. That would be a really fun project to do. But you can see how this can be really messy. So make sure that you have your work surfaces protected um, with paper, newspaper, or whatever you have. So I'm gonna set this aside to dry. And if you are doing, if you're using one piece of paper, you can dip it in multiple times like this. So I've got a hydrangea here and here and here, and they're kind of going off the page. So it looks a little more realistic. If you wanted to do the more advanced one, then you could just do a hydrangea on each piece of paper, one big one on each piece of paper. And then what we would do with those is See how pretty those end up being? That's awesome. So then what we would do with those is we would take a pair of scissors and we would cut that out. Just where nice circular cuts where the bubbles are. And when you guys are cutting, make sure you move the paper. See how I'm moving the paper and not the scissors? You wanna move the scissors by opening and closing them. But if I'm moving my scissors like this and I'm trying to cut around, that becomes really weird and hard to do. So just turn your paper and you get right around those bubbles. Okay, so I've already done this. So I'm gonna set this aside and I'll show you. We'll go skip back to the one that I already did. So this one, I've just got a few hydrangeas on here. Now, actually let's go to the one where I have a lot of hydrangeas. There we go. Now it's time to add the leaves and you can see how easy it was to get this. And this looks really complex, like it's really hard to do, but it's not. And it's a lot of fun blowing those bubbles. Um, you just need, by the way, a little bit of air to blow the bubbles. If you do too much, it's just gonna, so just go nice and slow when you're blowing the bubbles. Okay, so now we wanna add some leaves. If I'm going to add leaves using watercolor, I wanna pay attention to the edges of the hydrangea because you don't want to paint a leaf just right on top of your hydrangea because the leaves are behind your hydrangea. So I come in with my watercolor and I follow the edge. And then I just give myself a nice big leaf shape. And remember, the hydrangeas have really big, pretty green leaves. Don't worry about the veining in the leaves because we'll get to that in a few minutes. If you want to add different colors to the leaves, like a little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown, um, that would really give some depth to your, to your leaves. If you want to stick with green, stick with green. And don't worry about the edges because you want them to be a little bit jagged. You could even go in and make them a little jagged like this if you wanted to. I would add a little bit of realism to it. And they have a nice point. The hydrangea leaves, nice point on them. Um, they are not smooth on the edges or the tip. 
Okay, so once you do that, I would just add a few leaves around, um, maybe some over here. Let's do a smaller leaf coming off the side here. And remember, we're gonna follow down here, we're gonna follow the bubbles. And it looks like they're coming out from behind. I'm gonna make this one a little bit wider because these are nice and wide. So maybe I would add some over here, I'd add some here, uh, maybe one coming out over here, and then we'll let this dry. This is the really important part because you can't work on this project if your paint is wet. What it does is it ends up tearing your paper and making it soggy and you get holes in your paper and get really frustrated really quickly. So let it take the time to dry. It's a nice sunny day out today. I don't know what it is on the day you're watching this video, but you can also put this out in the sun to dry and it'll dry really quickly. So let me set this aside and show you some leaves that I painted. This is um, a leaf that I painted on paper and I used a little bit of brown in it to make it look a little bit more realistic. So what I wanna do is put the veins in it now. So I use my pen and I'm gonna give myself a curved line right down the center. You could do it straight if you wanted to, but this one is kind of straight. But you can see how just a little bit of a curve makes a difference. And then you're gonna come in and just quickly just add some close together veins in there. And that just ends up giving your leaf some character and some depth. It looks much nicer that way. Now, you could do a couple of things to get the jagged edges if you're cutting out your leaves. You can cut them um, just using, you know, straight up edges like that with your scissors. You could get a pair of specialty scissors. Some people, if you uh, know someone in your house that does scrapbooking or any other paper projects, sometimes you'll find some um, fancy scissors like this. This one cuts an edge that makes it look like the paper's torn. So I'm gonna do that here, just to show you what it would look like. So see how that edge just kind of looks torn? Or you could do it the old fashioned way and you can just tear the edge. I think that looks probably the nicest. So that's what I'm gonna do the rest of the way here, just being really careful to keep the shape of your leaf. And see how that gives a really natural look to it? Now, for your leaves this way, if you're cutting them out, this is for the more advanced one because what we're going to do with the more advanced project is we take one of our, and I, I guess I didn't have one cut out, so I'm gonna quickly finish cutting this one out, is we cut out the flowers, and then we'll take the flower with a little bit of a glue stick, and we'll put a little glue in the center only, and then we'll pop it down. And the reason we do it in the center only is because the edges will naturally just kind of stick up on their own, giving it a little bit of a 3D look. And then we'll take our leaf, put a little glue on the leaf, and we'll stick that underneath and glue that down. A little bit of ink on my table there. So this is how you would do the more advanced one. It's really not that much more advanced and it looks really cool. So give it a try, you might surprise yourself. The complicated part comes with the butterfly. Dun, dun, dun. So with the butterfly, what we would do is make our butterfly and glue it on. But making the butterfly is a little tricky. So let's talk about that. This butterfly and all butterflies really are special because they have something called symmetry. What is symmetry you ask? So if something is symmetrical, and that's kind of a big word, it means that it's the same on both sides. So in this picture, you can see this butterfly has the same design on one side as it has on the other side. So it is symmetrical. This is the letter H. And you can see the letter H is symmetrical because it's the same on this side. 
you can fold it right in half and it's the same. And you can also fold it lengthwise and it's still symmetrical because it's the same on both sides. So the letter H, capital H, is symmetrical. And that's how you want to make your butterfly. So to do that, you would get a small scrap piece of paper and you would fold that in half because we're making both sides the same. So in order for us to make it easier on ourselves to get both sides the same, we're folding our paper in half. It's kind of a cheat. So we know when we cut out the butterfly shape, it's gonna be the same on both sides when we open it. So once you get your piece of paper, we're going to draw the wing of a butterfly. Just one, just one wing. And this shape, you gotta kinda work with it. Um, it's basically, I don't know, it's kind of like a, a sideways thumb almost. So when you're drawing your shape, think of how your butterfly is going to be. And a butterfly usually has a larger part of their wing and then a smaller bit of the wing that comes down like so. And if you mess it up, that's okay, because you can just keep drawing because this side's not gonna be seen. So I think I would want this one a little bit more pointy. So I'm gonna make it a little more pointy. And then that's how I would cut it out. So then you take your scissors with the paper folded and you cut it out, holding it nice and tight and cut it out. And then you end up with this little butterfly shape when you open it up. We are going to draw some lines on this butterfly. Let me put down a piece of scrap paper here because I'm going to use my Sharpie to do this. The first thing I'm going to draw is the body. A little head here and his body parts. Now, since we can't really mirror our drawing, we're gonna to have to do it by hand. So when I look at a butterfly, um, I know that they the ones that I'm thinking of, like a monarch butterfly, it has lots of lines. So I'm gonna do black lines up here. Actually, I'm gonna give him or her just a nice, thick outline. I'm gonna try my other marker because it's got a thicker tip to it. But I want to do the exact same thing on this side. Whatever I do to the one side, even if it's a, a mess up where, oops, I didn't want that dot there, that's okay. Just put it on the other side too. And then it's not a mess up anymore. So far it's the same. Now I'm going to segment or break up the two parts. So I'm just going to do that. Just like that. And I'm going to put, let's see, I'm going to look at my original butterfly so I can remember how I did my veining on that. And I'm going to put a line here. And I'm going to do it exactly the same over here, or try to. And now I'm going to add a little bit of veins. And I just want it to be the same on both sides. See how that's the same on both sides? And I'm gonna do the same over here. I'm gonna put one here, one here, and then I'm gonna bring them down. So basically, you're just giving it some stripes. Put three here, which means I gotta come over here and put three here. And that's it for the butterfly. And then you would just go in and color your butterfly however you want. So here's one that I did. And you can see I did different colors on this one. The one on the original, I just did all orange to look like a monarch butterfly. Now, when I go to glue my butterfly on, I want to do it in a special way. Fold your butterfly so that... The colored part is on the inside. And then you wanna take your glue stick and just put glue right on 
this edge right here. That's the only part we want to have sticking to our piece of paper because that's what's going to make the butterfly look like it's flying. And I'm gonna put my butterfly right here to a little angle. And then once that's glued down, you can bend his wings up. And there's our butterfly. You could add more leaves if you wanted to, um, more flowers, whatever you want to add. Because again, guys, this is your project. You can change it up and do it how you want. But what a fun project using a straw and making bubbles. Who would have thought? Look how awesome that is. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this project. Watch the video again if you need to. Pause it if you need to. Ask questions down below and I will get to them and answer them for you if you have any. But enjoy, guys. This is a really great project to do. Have fun.